is 1130 and welcome to our first drop everything and learn we are really excited to have you here. And this really came about just as a, a conversation and talking with the team about how we all have different things that we know a lot about and things that we like to share and so we wanted to allow that to be open to where everyone can share in and today we have Christian. Haynes with us, and he is an amazing with Vion. And so I'm not going to talk long. I'm going to hand it over to him because he's got a lot of really cool, great things to show you about Vion, which is an animation tool. So without further ado, Christian, take it away. Well, hey everyone. Uh, good morning. And so what I'm going to what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to share uh, just this outline for you real quick. And then we don't have a lot of time. Uh, these lunch and learns are supposed to be a little informal, and so. Hopefully, if at the end we have time for some questions, if I didn't uh, clarify anything for you, then hopefully we'll have time to um, go ahead and answer any of your questions that you have. Just bear with me while I get this pulled up. All right, can everyone see that? All right, one moment. Yes. Let's get this out of the way. So uh, here in a moment, what I'll do is I will go into Beyond, and I'm just going to give you guys a brief walkthrough of all the different tools uh, and options that you have within the video creator. It is not a free resource, and so by the end of the video as well, uh, I will share a link with you to where you can go and look at the different packages that they offer. Um, there's a 14-day free trial as well, and so hopefully some of the tips that you learn here today, we don't expect you to remember all of them, and so one, Beyond has a lot of great resources that you can go back to that will touch on everything that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, but also uh, the tips that we're going to provide will hopefully get you prepared where you can use the most of that of that free trial time if you decide to use it. And so the first thing that uh, you'll want to do before you get into beyond at all, and this is something that me and Amanda and Gerard, some of our team members uh, looked at doing uh, when I first got involved, was you really need to have an outline for your video. You need to know the content of what you want your videos to be about. You need to know uh, the subject of what you're gonna talk about. And so when you know those things and you can create a script and an outline before you even get into Beyond, before you even start messing with the tools, uh, it becomes a lot easier um, and you'll find um, uh, that you'll have a lot more opportunity and you'll kind of know what to do. It's very stressful, I can tell you, to kind of go into Beyond and have access to all these tools and to not know where to go with it. So hopefully today we'll kind of help you direct uh, direct that. And then when you do, if you decide to get into this tool, um, you'll be better equipped. And so uh, the, the first thing that I shared with you here is just a quick outline, okay? The first thing that you'll want to do before we get into the tool uh, is kind of have an idea, like I said, of what you want to talk about. And so what this looks like, usually, um, if you're going to write or speak on anything, you'll either write out a script. And so what we've done is, uh, and Beyond shares, Beyond shares this as well, is when you have a script, you kind of write out what you want to talk about. And really what you want to do is you just want to hit on those main points. Okay, so whatever your content area is, that's what you'll talk about. And you create this outline that looks like this, where you can have, whether there's uh, verbal audio, where you'll have voiceover, and I'll show you how to do that as well. With everything where you've got someone speaking, you've got text on the screen, it's really important to kind of know what you want to show your audience, the visuals. And so here we'll say, I'm Justin, in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour through the Beyond Studio, let's get started. While that audio or while that text is on screen, you wanna have a close-up of Justin's character in the video. And again, we'll show you how to do that. But this is just a really basic outline of what you wanna do before you get into Beyond. And I promise you, if you get comfortable with doing these, it will make your video editing so much easier. So that's the first thing that you'll really want to do is learn how to plan your video, make a script, um, make an outline. And then once you've got that, we really can get into the nitty gritty of video editing. One other thing that I want to touch on before we open up uh, is that there are two types of videos, I think, um, that you can really use with Beyond. Uh, one is a visual, and I'll share one of those by the end of the uh, the talk today of kind of what a visual video looks like where there's not any verbal audio they're usually really brief uh, and it's you use these usually for um, sharing a small bit of information maybe you're doing a rebranding like we did recently and so they're really good for that but the other video that you may use a lot more often and is a lot more instructive is what i call a narrative video usually there's going to be uh, 
verbal audio recorded over. The videos are typically longer and they'll be more descriptive. And I'll show you one of those as well, of one that we've done before for our team. And so you can kind of get an idea of, uh, after we go through everything that you can do with Beyond, you'll get an idea of what it looks like if you were to put everything together. And so um, if you want, I have, I'm more than happy to share this outline with you before we get off, just so you can kind of have an idea of what it looks like. And then what we do is we will get into um, Beyond here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you, this is what the homepage looks like, okay? Obviously we've already created plenty of videos. I can go to shared with you and see all the different folders of the work that my team members have done. You guys probably won't have that when you start your new account. And so what you'll do, the first thing is all this will be empty, okay? On this top right up here, once you create an account, you go to create a video. And the first thing that you'll see is there's three different art styles that you can choose from. If you select the professional grade, um, which is the most expensive package that Beyond has, there is actually a fourth option, um, but we've never used it. We have access to it and you probably wouldn't use it anyways. The first main two are contemporary and business friendly. That's the ones that we mainly use. Whiteboard animation, I have never used it before. Um, I don't know of anyone who has used it. That whiteboard animation is really good for uh, really short videos. You're really limited on your artwork. Um, it's really good for getting a, a one single point across. Um, and so, and you'll notice, you've kind of seen the preview here where there are like everything is hand drawn and this kind of hand comes up. So that's an art style you're, you're welcome to choose, but the ones that we use are contemporary and business friendly. Business friendly, we've used, used before. In my opinion, it does not look as good and professional as contemporary, um, but the good the benefit to using business friendly is that there are way more assets. And so when I say assets, I'm talking about props, characters, um, items that you can put in your video. You've got a lot more access. And so you can kind of see there where there's like Christmas theme and she's dressed up like an astronaut. This is really good for when it says business friendly is career specific videos. And so uh, if you wanted to uh, focus in on maybe healthcare or a science department, you could focus on things like that because they would have the items to use in your video to show that. Contemporary uh, looks a lot better. It's a lot smoother. There's not as many assets, um, but the good thing is that you can upload whatever assets you want. You can upload any logo, picture, video, anything like that that you'd like. And so that's why we use it. And so I'm gonna select that one today. So it's gonna take a second here to load. When we get in, I'm just gonna briefly walk you through all of the different tools on the homepage. Again, I understand that we're throwing a lot of information at you. We don't expect you to remember all of it. Um, but once we kind of get familiar with all these different options and tools that we can mess with, I'm going to create a sample clip for you so you can kind of get an idea of, of what it looks like to make a video. And then hopefully we can share some of the work that we've done before previously. So the first thing that you'll see up here is when you click on create a new video, you are met with a title template, okay? Uh, most videos when you create new is gonna start with this same exact template. And when you get in here, everything on here is customizable. Okay, and so I'll come back to it, but the title, you can add and change anything from the font to the color to the, to the size. You can even add movement, which again, we will later touch on how to do that. Um, but the first thing that you'll want to do is when you get in and you create a video and you choose your art style is right down here is your timeline. And throughout the editing, throughout the entire process, you'll come down here and this will show you an overview of everything that you've made. Right now, we only have one scene that the Beyond program has given us. We haven't created anything new. And so this is the only thing there. What you can do is throughout the video, when you hit preview, and I'll go ahead and do that for you, it's gonna give you a brief intro of what your video looks like. And so, and that, that's the end of the scene. That's all there is right now. And you can reset it, you can do it over and over. So we'll exit out of that. And as you create scenes, you can go up here and preview and you can even preview from different uh, spots in the timeline. And so as you can work, you can kind of stop back and look at your work, kind of take a step back. And it really helps you get a good idea of what you're making. Add a scene. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and choose template. This will be how the, the majority of the scenes that I make, it'll probably be the majority of the scenes you make as well as I always use a template and I customize first. Okay. You do have the option to add a blank scene, which is just a completely blank slate. Um, but I find that it's a little bit uh, more creative and I find more inspiration when I choose template. When you open up your template tab, okay? 
you'll go through all these different categories of templates that you can choose from, from government, healthcare, home, industry, leisure, office, okay? And you can even go up here and you can search a keyword and it will pop up different templates for that section, okay? And so we'll go ahead and click on one here. And so it's gonna pop up your little template there. And then what you can do, again, is you can preview. Some of these will have movement already in them. You can see this character here is talking, he's kind of moving his arm. Some of them won't, some of them are standstill. And so that's okay. You'll exit out of preview. And so once you've got your template, what I'm gonna go through real quick is from the left side to the right side of the screen, that's gonna go through all these different tools and I'm gonna show you how to use them. So I've already showed you our timeline. Right here's where you can see your different videos, your different scenes for each video, okay? And you'll see that this time right here, that's how long the video is playing. So right now it's about 10 seconds long. Here, when we finally do add audio, which you can't see me right now, you'll be able to add audio clips. And that could be anything from royalty-free music. It could be music that you uploaded yourself, like a school alma mater, for example. Um, you could even record yourself narrating the video. And so you can add that as well. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Once you've got this timeline, you know where all that's at over here, you've kind of got a stage view and your guides. And all this is for is just zooming in and out of the screen. Your guides here, you can show grids to maybe help center things out, okay? And then your stage view or your asset view. And asset view, what that does is every single prop that you have on screen at the time, it will go through a list of every single one. Right now, it's pretty simple because there's only a few on there. But when you really get into it, you may have scenes with 20 to 30 different assets, depending on how complicated you really want to get. Okay. On the top right up here, you've got your preview tab, which I already showed you. Okay. You can preview from the start, which will go all the way back to the beginning of the video, or you can preview from where you're currently working. Okay. Save will obviously save your video. Then you have options up here to share and download the files that you'll share later. Replace background, true color, uh, scene transition and camera angles. We'll all come back to those later. But these are essentially options to edit the scene itself. And so if I were to click on an asset, you'll see these different options pop up on different things that I can do with it. And you'll notice that I've got expression and action for a character. But if I were to click on a prop, those options don't necessarily pop up. Instead, what I can do with this is I can change the color of the prop. And so every asset that you click on, you may be provided with different options. And so hopefully we'll be able to go through each one of those and kind of show you how you can edit those things. Um, over here to your top left, this is kind of where your list of options are uh, for assets and props. The upload tab allows you to upload um, your own uh, props or logos, okay? You can do anything from a picture to a video to an audio file. And so we've got our digital learning uh, unit uh, uh, logo right there that I've uploaded. And again, once you upload, you have freedom to customize that logo or whatever it is that asset that you upload just as much as you do any other prop. So you'll be able to change the color and the size and even the movement. If you want it to be active across the screen, you can do all those things. Here's a shared library. Again, these are just video clips and then some other things that we've used before for other schools. Um, upload file right there. That is how you would upload and you would choose from your computer. Your character, these are where all your different characters are going to come in place. And even though we've selected a specific art style for this template, you can actually go in here and you can change characters to the different art styles if you, if you wanted to. We've never had to use that option before, but that is, that is available. You've got your props option here. Okay, let's go ahead and delete him. And this is where it gets uh, kind of varied is there are literally hundreds. I think in different art styles have different ones, but the business friendly one that I talked about earlier has upwards of a thousand different props that you can use. Okay. And if you go into beyond, they actually will even teach a short two to three minute video of how to make your own uh, props. And really that's just a matter of like, uh, combining shapes together. And so I think in the video they made like a coffee pot and they just took some rectangles and circles and they edited all these shapes together, they combine them and then now it looked like a coffee pot that they could move around within their video. So if you can't absolutely find something that you want, you can either make it or you can upload it. And so there really is no end into what you can do prop wise. And so I can take this pot here, I can shrink it down to size and I can place it on the table and then it's there. And so if I were to continue the scene, that item would stay there. I can change the colors on it. I can change the size. I can mirror it. I can flip it upside down. 
Um, you can do all these different things with your props. And the majority of what you will be doing is probably uh, editing characters or editing props and then coming down here and cutting scenes. That's really the hardest part of Beyond. It's not difficult at all. Um, the next option that you have, which I actually found out about this yesterday, is that you can upload charts. So if you're wanting to give a more informative video, um, you can upload a pie chart, okay? And it's not just a generic pie chart. Um, I'll change the color of the background so we can see it better. It's not just a uh, generic pie chart with uh, random data, but you can go in here when you click on a pie chart. Again, just like every prop, when you click on a prop, you go to this top right section up here and you'll be given different options for each asset, okay? You go to the pie chart and there's options up here that say chart settings and chart data. These options will only appear when you've got a bar graph or some kind of pie chart pulled up. And you can change the information here to whatever you want and it will change the data. And so you can go here, your value, label, percentages even, you can change what information you're providing and then you can even as far as go in and change the color of each section. You can change the, the title of it as well. So um, that is how you will use different uh, chart as a prop. Text, same thing. You can add, some of these will have movement, okay, with a little preview button. And so you can kind of see what it'll look like when it pops up. Some of them are stagnant, which is probably usually what you'll want. And then again, you can put in whatever you want here. And then once you've got your text in, you can come in here and change the font. You can change the size of it. You can change if it's italic or bold, really anything else you would think in a normal Word document. And then you can, again, even change uh, the color of the words that you're using. Okay. And then you can move that around so you can see it. And then, of course, your audio files. All of this music right here is royalty-free music that Beyond provides. And what you do is you can preview it, and it'll play. And when you decided that you wanted to add a, a song to your video, what happens is, like I mentioned earlier, on the bottom down here in your timeline, let me pull this up a little bit so you can see it better. Now you've got this, this audio file, and it's just gonna go indefinitely until, until the end of the video. So it's just gonna go on and on and on until you decide to, to cut it down. You can move these files around. You can also go in here and right click and split. And so you can cut it up into different sections. And so if there's, Maybe there's an audio file that you uploaded, or especially if you're doing um, like a voiceover, you'll want to cut those into different parts. That way you can match them to your video a little bit better. And so that's just an option you have to do that. And so you can you can split, you can copy, you can delete, you can you can even make it longer. Okay. And so those are all different options that you have for your audio files. So that's kind of all your different assets right here. And again, on any of these, if you can't find what you want, you can either search it. You can search in the chat bar here, or you can upload a file of something that you wanted to use uh, from your pictures, your downloaded documents. And so you can upload those as well. Let me go ahead and get off of that. Let's go back to here, fit the screen. I'm just gonna remove some of this stuff so it's not so cluttered, and we're gonna choose another template here. And again, we'll just click something simple. We don't want it to be, oops, sorry, it's the wrong bar overrun with uh, just stuff. So this is another good one. And you can zoom in here, okay. And so what you would do if you found a scene that you wanted that you liked, okay, a good idea, or if you wanted to create your new, um, is you would go here and you would add it the prop, edit the props, you would customize the length of your scene to your liking, and then you could, again, you could add another scene. And so it would just switch, it would transition from one scene to another. And so I'll show you kind of what this looks like here. Let me zoom out of here. Let me do that again. Sorry about that. And so while that's playing, you can have the video that you want to be shown. You have usually what I do is if I'm ever verbalizing anything on the video, I've got text on the video as well. I think it's really good to reiterate those points. Usually if someone is talking on screen, it's good to have whatever they're saying being typed out as well. Um, that's just a bit of advice. That's not so much as being able to use beyond. And so what I'm gonna do real quick for you, I'm gonna delete all these templates because it's getting kind of chaotic. Remove this audio here. 
And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to kind of mess with different props and just show you different things that you can do with them. Um, so you've got the three R styles. I've kind of showed you all the different tools that are available and they seem really basic, but you can do all kinds of different things with them. Um, and so what you'll do, I'm actually going to remove this one as well, is we'll go ahead and we'll choose a template. I'm going to hit replace. And again, I just, you just right click on any option. You can also do that up here on the props and it's going to give you different options than you had before. But we'll replace with a new template and we'll back up here to something more simple. And we'll just do home. And we'll come over here and we'll find just this template of a house. Okay. So some things you can do. This again, this is just a template. This is just kind of a guidelines for you to work is you could go to these trees. You could go to replace, say that you didn't like the trees that were there, or maybe you were trying to, to match a certain season, okay? And you could go to something that, that better matched the season that you're in. And then what we will do here is every time you click replace, it'll just give you that option, okay? And so we'll just do that with all of these. Okay. So I've, I've replaced props. You can also go over here. You can replace the, the props with other things. So, and it doesn't have to be another house. I could put anything there, but we're just kind of changing things out here. And again, all I'm doing is I'm right clicking on a prop, replacing, coming over here. I've searched house. And so I'm looking at different homes and I'm putting different items on there. Okay. And so now the scene all of a sudden will even change the color. You click on the background. Again, anything that you click on, you come up here and these are your options for that scene. And we'll change it to maybe gray or white. And so suddenly um, like a mid spring day uh, is more, more winter based. And then another thing that you can do, get this out of here. And this is something I really like to do. This is just a small bit that look, makes to me, look, makes everything look better is you can add camera angles to every video. And so normally if I were to just hit preview here, Everything that's within this square is what is what you would see when you played the video. Okay, now there's no movement and so it doesn't look like it's playing right now. But if I were to exit out of there and I select the camera angle, okay, we can zoom in. And now whatever is within this camera angle is what you're gonna see. And so I'll just hit preview again and now it's zoomed in, okay. And then really where the, the quote unquote magic happens is if you go back up here and you add camera movement, you can zoom in. So this yellow one will always be, and you can kind of see a, a arrow here in the middle. This is where your camera angle is gonna follow. And so now, even if it's just a little, just a little camera movement on each scene, you'll notice this slow zoom in looks a lot better than if you just had a stagnant scene on, in front of you, okay? So we'll add another um, template here. And I'm just gonna show you how to do a quick scene transition, okay? And what we'll do is, uh, let's do someone in the kitchen, okay? Early morning. We may even change the color to make it kinda a little bright. There we go. And so then what we'll do, and go here. You want to always, the scene transition that you're going to transition into, that's where you'll add the scene transition. So if I want to transition into this scene, I'm going to click on this scene. If I'm trans transitioning out of the scene, I'll have to add another one at the end of it, if that makes sense. So what we'll do here is I'll click on this. We will add a scene transition again. I've clicked on the scene up here, all my different options. There's this little exit arrow that says scene transition. And I'll just do, uh, we can do, one that we use a lot is either slide or pop. And so if I can find it here, and we will slide down. All right, now what's gonna happen, you'll see this little green arrow pop up right here, or this green line. And this is, this is showing you that there is some kind of effect on your screen. This blue line you see here is camera movement. And so anytime you see any colored line above your scenes here, you know that you have put some form of effect either on an asset or in your video. And so when I preview now, what you'll see is it's gonna zoom into the home and it's gonna slide it back into the kitchen, okay? And again, another way to add, quote, the magic is we can go back to this scene 
and we can add camera. We can mark the starting point of where we want the camera to go. We can add the camera movement and we can kind of slide across the screen. And then again, what will happen is we're going to start back over here. And now you've kind of got movement going on. And then if you add music to that, you preview which I don't know if you guys can hear my audio but and so that is how you'll transition scenes you can also go in like I said before I'm going to remove this just so you can see better remove the camera movement here if I were to zoom in some things that you'll probably notice is uh, this character right here it looks like he's reading something off a checklist maybe a grocery list you can click over here to his action. And you can change it to really almost anything you can think of. So it looks like here in this one, he's holding the same item. You can even preview it. But if you apply, suddenly he's going to change. And so when the video starts, he's no longer going to be standing still, but he'll actually be performing that action. And you can do sitting. You've got him where he's sitting in a, in a uh, wheelchair. You've got him where he's like sitting down, different expressions. And again, if you did do this, you would want to add some kind of prop under them, like a chair or something. We'll put them up here on the countertop. And he's smiling as well. And so you can also change, apart from their action, you can also change their expressions. And so you can make them sad. You can make them talk. You can make them laugh. And what's really cool is also this talk sad, no sip link, okay? Anything, any verbal audio that you add onto a video if uh, you can set the system to recognize that voice and sync it to the lips of characters. So if you want what you are narrating to come out of the voice of one of your characters, you can sync that audio up and you'll see it come from their mouth. And so what I'll do for you real quick is I'll show you a video where we've done that before, where uh, one of our directors um, had her son come in and uh, help edit a video with us. And so we used his voice and we put it on one of the characters and it ended up looking really well. And so I'll play it for you. Um, can you guys hear my audio when I, when I play this music? Okay, good. I'm gonna play one of these for you. I won't have to play through the whole thing, but you kind of get an idea. Of, we've got a title screen, it fades to black at the end. You'll kind of get an idea of what they look like once you utilize all those things. Some things I'll point out before I start is we were able to change the font of this text here to match the logo of the school. The school sent us their mascot, so we were able to upload it. And so all these assets were sent in from the school. What I want to point out real quick, just like I was saying before, is if you'll notice, it's, re it's really easy to see right here. So here, JJ is talking, but you'll notice these characters, their lips are not moving. Okay, it's obvious that that is not the character speaking, but here, you can see his lips moving to the sync of the audio. Beyond has the option to do that. And so if you fast forward all the way to the end, we provide some information for the school. We have JJ wave goodbye. Thanks for watching. And then sometimes you can even fade to black. That's a really good option. Gerard said something really good in the chat, which is that these are really good for making GIFs. And so that is true. Um, you would have to download the file and edit that, edit it manually as far as I know. I don't know if there's an option to make a GIF within the, within the system, but that is possible. Uh, there's a complete sharing option within the system where if you have multiple team members, we can all uh, share and edit videos together. Um, there's an option there. Me and Gerard, one of our team members, has have used it before where if you are editing a video, um, someone can come in and edit it with you. The only, the only stipulation to that is that it's not going to let two people edit the video at the same time. Um, if it does that, it would just be chaos. But it does alert me. If I try to log in and someone's in there editing the video, it will tell you that. So just some good tools. Um, here's another one. Again, I won't play the whole thing, but 
the one I showed you just now, that was a narrative video that I kind of spoke of before where there's voiceover. It's really instructive. It's a little bit longer, but this one right here is one that we use for a conference that we attended after our rebranding. And if it'll load here, there's no audio, there's music. Um, but apart from that, I've just got some, some words on the screen. And so this is really good for if you want to display something um, while maybe at a booth or something like that. Again, or if you just want to play it on loop, these, these type of videos are really good for that. They're usually a little bit less intense. They're not as instructive because there's, um, you don't have a particular audience that's going to sit there and listen to the whole thing. But again, you can provide all this information without providing voiceover. And what I'll do real quick, one last thing. I think this is a good idea that I just thought of. I'm going to go into edit one of these videos so you can kind of see what the timeline of a video that is complete looks like. And so we'll go here and click on this edit video. Let it load for a moment. And so now you can see there's all these different scenes that we've added. There's all these different effects. Every Almost all of these have a camera effect, which is that blue line. These green lines here is some kind of uh, effect on the screen itself. So maybe there's a, a scene turn, transition or maybe there's a, there's a prop in there that's moving around. And so these different effects here, you can cut this audio if you wanted to, to where maybe you wanted a certain scene to be quiet or you wanted the audio to change. You can do that. You can have multiple audio files uploaded at once. And so here you see this little green line. It means that there's a scene transition. And so if I click on this in preview, right here, you'll notice that this scene is about to, it transitions into this one with a slide. So some things that you probably wouldn't notice if you're watching a video, but things that are really good to know when you're editing one. And so, and again, uh, you go here and you'll notice um, you can make options to where you can turn the volume down as the video gets ready to end. Or even sometimes what I do is I will add a blank scene at the end of a video. I'll change the color to black. And then you can choose fade as your scene transition. And if you go back here and you preview, if, again, if you see how fast that is, it's really easy to do. By the end of the video, it'll fade and that's the end. So again, I understand that we're throwing a lot of information at you guys. Um, and so I just kind of want to go through all the different tools to kind of get you familiar with it. I do want to share in the, in the chat uh, a link that we have, I can find it here, uh, for the different packages that they have. This is not a resource that we actually attend to. This is just one that we're aware, with, aware of that we use. And so you guys are welcome to use it. And so I have got a link. I'm going to put a link in the chat of where you go if you guys are interested. Again, it's a 14-day free trial. Um, and copy this here. And so again, the whole outline that I showed you at the beginning of outlining your video, creating a script, knowing what you want to make, if you know those things before you start your free trial, you'll get much more out of those 14 days. It took me about two days to really just sit down and get familiar with it. And so if you can do get all that stuff prepped before you get into the tool, um, it makes it a lot easier. So let me go ahead and share that with you. And hopefully, if you guys have any questions, um, I went a little bit over. Uh